Is that not clickable? No. Oh. The chat. No. Oh. All right. I'm gonna wait for wait for this to fill up a little bit, and then get into into the topic. Um, I don't know if you can see in the in the comments. I left a link to the um, high intensity training home workout that I just put out there. So, you know, obviously some places are still doing the lockdowns and shutting gyms down and yada, yada, yada. So don't worry. Um, I created a high-intensity training workout that is just as effective as a gym workout with very minimal equipment needed, almost no equipment in many cases. So if you guys are stuck working at home or if you prefer, if you are stuck working out at home, or if you prefer to work out at home, go ahead and pick up that workout. Everything is uh, explained and demonstrated, and it's extremely effective. Oh, man. Let's see. Hold on. Um, what else do I need to do? Mm. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, so I'm going to take some of your guys' questions, of course, you know, um, then I'm going to talk about a couple of things that, you know, I get, I get a, a lot of questions. <laughs> I get tons of questions all day, every day, and there's starting to be a pattern of them. So today's topic is going to be about one of the patterns I noticed, and that is things that people tend to worry about when it comes to exercise and diet that don't actually make a difference. And if they do make a difference, it's not something you'd ever be able to even notice with the naked eye or even if you're keeping accurate records. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of those things today. Once we fill up a little bit, um, I'm going to share Chrome tab. Where is it? See if this works. Yeah, so I'm also going to share this this tab. So this is my hit home workout. Mm, can I switch them? Let's see. What if I do this? Nope. 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 There we go. Screen layout. Shift six. Oh, yeah. So I'll just do it like that. So this is the hit home workout. I'm just going to leave it up here so you guys can check it out. Can I move it? No. All right. Just keep the questions coming in as it, you know, fills up. And that's the link to the hit home workout at the bottom. All right, let's see. Um, LFC rags, uh, just go ahead and ask the question here. I, I have tons of emails and messages to get through. So, you know, if you're here right now, just ask your question now. 
um, because, you know, I may not even get to it later. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go through the questions here. I'm just going to read them off so you guys can still see the link. All right. So question, question here. One, if genetics play a huge role, should we change anything in our routine? I'm 5'6", 155, and was 172 before I got the flu. Well, I think you just answered your own question. Since genetics play a huge role, you shouldn't change anything in your routine because changes in your routine are not going to make any – If you're assuming you're doing everything properly, changes in your routine are not going to make any noticeable difference because genetics, genetics play – such a large role. There is some variation in people's ability to respond in terms of, you know, volume and time under load. Um, people with a lot more in um, um, Ryan Hall. Um, wow, dude, I'm drawing a blank. Ryan Hall. Yeah. <laughs> um, hold on one second. I, I don't know why my brain's not working. Is it Ryan? Why did I forget this? Yeah, Ryan Hall. Wow, sorry. I haven't said his name in a while. Ryan Hall is a uh, – he's, he's owner of Exercise Science LLC in Louisiana. He's done a ton of research. You may not even heard of him. Um, you got, I, don't, I don't know for one reason or another. But Ryan Hall – Exercise Science LLC owner is a, a studio. He's done a lot of uh, research, and, and he found that people who have more slow twitch muscle fiber genetically tend to respond a little better to longer set durations and a little more volume. And people with more fast twitch muscle tend to respond to shorter set durations, kind of, kind of heavier loads. And less volume. So in terms of varying your workout based on genetics, that's about all you would need to do. But very little variation is required if you are adhering to the proper principles. Um, Rockwell says he was 172 before he got the flu. Remember it. Oh, you're 155 now. So whatever you lost, um, it's mostly water and muscle glycogen. And once you resume training again in proper diet, you're going to put that back on almost immediately. You really don't lose much muscle when you're sick. It just feels like you do because you're dehydrated and um, you're not eating much. You're not eating well. So, <clears throat> okay. Renegade. Do you play any sports? Do you play golf living in Florida? I play golf occasionally. I got my club sitting right there, actually. Um, you know, I find it hard to play. I used to be pretty good, but um, I broke this finger. I severed the tendon here playing with my dog. So I cannot, I don't know if you can see, but I can't do this function. I can't bend it there. So I found it extremely hard to hold a golf club these days. So I don't play much golf. Um, in terms of sports... I don't know. Every now and then I'll play some recreational basketball. I actually hurt my foot dunking the other day because I hadn't dunked a ball in so long that when I landed, I got plantar fasciitis for about two weeks because of so much because I'm heavier than I've been, you know, 215 ish. So my body was not ready to absorb the impact. So I play basketball here and there, um, but I don't regularly play sports. I played football for my whole life, and I'm done. <laughs> the most uh, active recreational thing I, I probably do is ride my jet ski. Believe it or not, it's not that easy. It's fun, too. Do you like green tea for fat loss? No. No. I don't understand why people think things like in, in this, this is like part of the topic today. Things that make no difference. Like green tea is not going to give you any noticeable fat loss. These are lies that have been told you by the fitness industry to sell you junk. Um, like you can't just like be overweight, start drinking green tea and expect fat to mobilize. Fat is mobilized based on demand, based on energy balance. You need a negative energy balance no matter what. 
There are things like green tea extract and coffee bean extract extract that have been shown to help mobilize fat tissue, but you have to be in a calorie deficit first. They might help, they might not, but regardless, you need the calorie deficit. Here's a weird question. Any effect? Any effect on what? Man, this is weird. Um, you know, I, I'm going to give you guys some advice, you, you men. All right. This is something that's been on my mind the past couple weeks. Many men are so goddamn lost that you're, you're looking for weird hacks like semen retention, cold showers, no fap, all these things to like bring a, a significant change to your life. And you, it's not going to happen, okay? Doing these, you're looking for a, a fast solution to a pretty complicated problem, which, which might be your life as a whole. So doing things like cold showers or semen retention or all this, it's, it, they're silly. They're not going to do, they're not going to have any sort of impact on your life that you think you're going to have. If there are things in your life which aren't going the way you want them to, I would say most of it is due to attitude. Most of it is due to how you perceive your life and how you perceive the world. And this is, is causing you to make decisions, either consciously or subconsciously, which is pushing you in a direction you don't want to be. And it's all got to do with your mindset and your attitude. So throwing in things like semen retention, cold showers, yada, 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 it's not going to change your mindset or attitude. You need to, the best recommendation I make for, for people who, who are looking for these kind of weird, silly hacks, study stoicism. Marcus Aurelius, um, who else is there? Seneca. You know, these, these ancient philosophers, their stoic principles. You know, if, if there are things in your life that are not good, they're your fault. Whether you want to, you know, take ownership for And again, even, you know, speaking of taking ownership, Jocko Willink, like, what a blessing to young men that guy is. And what he basically teaches, Jocko, is stoicism. So, you know, you guys that are looking for, you know, these, these little crazy little things, that are, they're weird. They're just weird things. They're not going to help, um, you know, celibate. You know, I was watching this show and this guy was like bragging about being celibate. I'm like, dude, you're out of your mind. Like, if you have these problems... Things like semen retention and celibacy and cold showers and carnivore diet, they're not going to help your problems. The problem is you and your mindset and your attitude. Study stoicism. Look up, read Jocko Willink's book. Um, read The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday and all of Ryan Holiday's books. I'll tell you, what, back, I was once a confused young man, super confused. Because the problem is what we, what we, see in society and what we're taught and what influences us, how we're supposed to behave, how we're supposed to react, how we're supposed to live in general is wrong in many cases. And that's why we end up so confused and looking for things to like, just get us out of this hole, like no fap, semen retention, cold showers, blah, 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 blah. We're looking for things to get us out of this hole but the whole can be fixed by changing your perception of the world and your attitude and your mindset. And if you want to do this, I highly recommend studying stoicism. You know, men have become so weak and emotional and needy crybabies. Like, it's like most men just like it, when a struggle comes along the way, they just completely fall apart. You need to remember something. Struggle, you need struggle. 
<laughs> like you're not you're not going to achieve a goddamn thing unless you experience struggle and overcome struggle. What the Stoics teach is that invite struggle. When struggle comes and annoying experiences come, invite it because it's an opportunity to learn and grow and overcome. And that's how you improve as a person. Not some silly life hack like no fap or semen retention. That's not going to help you overcome a struggle. You need to face the struggle head on, be a man, and figure it out. And the thing is, men have been so feminized that men aren't even capable of doing this anymore. You know, you're looking for the easy way out. There is no easy way out. You know, I've been thinking about this for the past couple of weeks. I get these really crazy questions about fitness. And it's just like, the, you know, they're men looking for shortcuts. That's some feminine shit. A, a man is supposed to fight and overcome. That's what that is the essence of a man. A man is not supposed to look for the easy way out or some shortcut or the path of least resistance. You shouldn't be looking for hacks or shortcuts. You shouldn't be looking for the fastest way to get ripped or the easiest way to get in shape. I get these questions all the time. That is some weak shit, guys. That's weak. Don't look for the easiest way. Look for the most effective way, an optimal way. But don't look for the easiest way. Consider the thing about this way. If it was easy to get in shape, we wouldn't respect people more who are in shape. And we do, whether consciously or subconsciously. You see somebody who's jacked or somebody who's in super good shape, you respect them more because you know the struggle they had to go through. You know the discipline and the effort involved in that. And if you're looking for the easiest way to get in shape, if it were easy, we wouldn't respect it. We would take it for granted. We wouldn't value it. So, you know, that's the end of my rant. But, you know, guys, stop looking for these little hacks, the easy way out, the easiest way, the blah, 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 the fastest way to lose fat. Stop with that shit. You don't want the fastest. You want something that takes effort. It's going to help you as a person. It's just this weak fucking Western society shit. Everybody's afraid to try it something. It's fucking sickening. <clears throat> like, I don't you, you guys might not know my story, but... Dude, none of this shit came easy to me. I I suffered for years. You know, and um, you know, a guy I've been watching lately on YouTube, his channel is called The War Room. He's just one badass savage dude. And he, you know, he he has a very he's very talented in putting the modern struggles of men into in articulating it, putting it into words. And he he basically explained my story, you know. Uh, you know, when I opened my first studio, it was like a year, a year and a half before I ever started making any kind of money. And you know, there are many times when I started my studio that I thought I'd have to close the things up, the thing up. I thought I'd have to go sell used cards. But you know, my, you know, most modern men, most society would you know would get tough and they go ah, and then they quit. But Back then, you know what I did? I looked for an answer. So I started stu studying Stoicism and Stoic philosophy. And what I learned was, okay, when the, when the shit gets real hard, the, the worst thing you could do is back out or look for an easy way out of it. The best thing you could do is just face that shit head on and just do the work. And I did that in my studios. So I noticed like after the first year, I was like, oh, my God, what the hell am I going to do? Like, it's not working. But I knew deep down not to quit. And the same thing applies for exercise. It's going to suck. You're not going to see the results as fast as you want them. It will appear to not be working. And all you're going to want to do is just stop because it's not worth your time. And right when you get to that point and you overcome that, that's when the breakthrough happens. In the, the war room, his, his video, I shared a clip of his video on my Instagram, said something similar to that. And he's exactly right. Because right when I got to the point where I was like, holy shit, there's no way this is going to work. This was like February of 2018 or something, 2017. 
I was like, this is not going to work. April and May of, 20, of 2017, 2018, whatever the year was, came, and I made $45,000 in two months. Okay? That's when the breakthrough happened, and it was smooth sailing from there on out. So to reiterate this rant, first of all, young men, if you're looking for somebody to, to give you really good life advice, go visit the War Room channel. This guy has a lot of valuable information for you. And in a nutshell, welcome struggle. See it as an opportunity to grow and overcome. And you will improve as a person every single time. Struggle's not, and Jesse Lee Peterson said this at the 21 convention. He was he was talking about, you know, the times where things are easy and going your way. Those are the worst times. There's no growth from that. Times where things, when, sh you know, shit, the way he says it, when things are going to hell in a handbasket, as Jesse Lee Peterson says, he goes, those are the best times. So that's when you grow. And it has to do with fitness. It has to do with business, everything. So stop looking for these shortcuts. <clears throat> All right. That's the end of my rant. Next question. Also, if you guys haven't got the hit home workout, get it because it's awesome. For hit at home, I'm stuck on whether to use full body or upper lower split. Full body would allow me to hit muscle more frequently, but upper lower would allow more volume per session. Um, well, you don't want the most volume possible per session. You want the minimum volume required to stimulate the desired result. The only reason you would need to do a split routine is if you couldn't tolerate the full body. You're probably better off doing the full body until you get to the point where you feel like you can't tolerate it. Again, you don't want to try to cram as many workouts in a week as possible. There's no benefit to doing that. The majority of the research shows that an increase in frequency for the for a muscle group provides no real increase in benefit. For instance, if you train a muscle group once a week versus twice a week versus three times a week, there's really no increase in benefit as long as you're properly stimulating it. Wayne Westcott in 1989 and 1986 did a study on this. I just I reread them uh, yesterday, actually. Um, so your goal should be to do as few workouts per week as possible to optimize recovery and growth. Because remember, the recovery and growth, the recovery is when the adaptation is taking place. You want to optimize that. You want you don't want to try to cram as many workouts into a week as possible. It's not going to get you to your end result any quicker. And there's the link for the at home workout, by the way. Actually, let me just, I'm just going to throw this on the bottom. Hold on. There we go. That way it doesn't. All right. Where, where's this Patreon one? I don't even want that up. Whatever. All right. Back to comments. <clears throat> If the food industry is off by 30% as far as labeled calories, how do you dial it in so you're efficient with intake? Um, add an additional 30% to it. So, like it, you know, they're, they're given a 30% margin of error, and they will take advantage of it to make their food seem more healthy. The FDA allows them to do this. I learned this from Drew Bay. So, for instance, if something says it's 500 calories, um you know, 500 times 1.3, it's actually 650. So when you're doing your calculation, adjust for 650, not 500. That's what you're actually eating. And the easiest way to do this is to take your resting metabolic rate or your or your target calorie intake. So say you're you're looking say you're looking to eat 1,800 calories a day. Multiply that by 0.3, which is 540. Subtract that from 1,800, and if you're aiming for 1,260 calories a day, you'll probably be closer to hitting 1,800. So what I noticed with uh, my clients in my studios, this took me a couple of years to notice this. So they'd, be, they'd say they were eating the way I told them to, and they weren't losing weight, and it would blow my mind. I would assume they were lying, but guess what? They weren't lying. They were still eating too much, 
but it wasn't because they were lying. They were still eating too much because of the inaccuracy in the measurement. So now I would get women and I would put them at 900 calories. They'd be like, oh my God, there's not enough food. I'm going to starve to death. And I would assure them that they're eating way more than 900 calories. They're eating probably more like 1400 or 1500. As soon as I started dialing in their diets, like to a ridiculous low amount, they started losing weight because you're always going to eat more than you think you are. So adjust by, you know, find the target calories that you want to eat each day and do about 15 to 30% less of that if your goal is fat loss. All right. Is there an exercise routine, diet, or supplements to increase testosterone? And please, your thoughts on myostatin and building muscles. Okay. Um, any intense exercise which, which aggressively fatigues muscle tissue will increase testosterone because part of the stimulus. So the, the testosterone is part of increasing protein synthesis and building new muscle tissue. So increased testosterone is part of the stimulus, which allows for the muscle growth. So yes, any intense exercise will increase testosterone. Um, diets lower in refined carbohydrates and uh, lower in refined sugars will also help with testosterone because um, chronically elevated levels of insulin will limit testosterone production. Supplements, not really. Um, so there aren't really, to my knowledge, there aren't really any really effective uh, supplements for increasing testosterone because if there were, they wouldn't be doing TRT, which TRT is super popular now. Thoughts on myostatin and, mu and building muscles? Um, I'm not sure exactly what your question is, but myostatin does affect how much muscle you can build. Um, a decrease in myostatin is also a side effect of intense um, muscle fatigue and weight training because myostatin is the limiter. It's pretty much the governor to how much muscle you can build. So the less myostatin, the more muscle you can build. For instance, there are, um, you know, there's, there's a famous dog called Wendy the Whippet who lacked myostatin altogether, no myostatin at all. And this was the most grotesquely jacked dog you'll ever see. Um, I'll look it up. So this is Wendy the Whippet. So the effect myostatin has is it limits muscle growth. So if you have no myostatin, you're going to end up looking grotesquely jacked. This was a genetic mutation. Um, and the more myostatin you have, the less your muscles will grow. This is largely genetic. Some people have less myostatin than others, and that's why they're part of the reason why they're able to get so jacked. Um, you know, anabolic steroids also lower myostatin. Um, working out lowers myostatin, but it's, it's large, largely a genetic thing. But you can't, there's no like supplements or something you would take for more miles than. All right. So send in a video, calisthenics are useless, but I'm curious, can't you use time and retention principles to build muscle? Okay, many people don't understand what calisthenics actually are. Calisthenics are rhythmic body weight movements. Um, that are relatively repetitive in nature, like a jumping jack or a burpee. So by definition, calisthenics don't optimize time under tension. A chin-up, a push-up, um, a bodyweight squat, these are not calisthenics. These are bodyweight exercises. So I, when I say calisthenics are useless, I'm referring to the rhythmic Locomotive repetitive movements like a burpee or a jumping jack, not bodyweight exercises. Okay. 
are the TSC exercises in the homework as effective as a normal one? E.g., is the TSC bicep exercise as effective as bicep curl? Yeah, definitely. Um, and what I've noticed with some exercises, you're actually able to inroad the targeted muscle group more deeply with time static contraction because it involves virtually no skill because you're contracting against nothing. So in the home workout, there is a time static con timed static contraction uh, hip belt squat. And holy shit. Is that hard? The the time static contraction squat in my home workout is more effective than any leg press and any barbell movement you could do. But it's it's ridiculous. Um, I you know even filming it, I'd get to about thirty seconds. I was not contracting at one hundred percent, more like seventy percent, and my legs nearly gave out. Time static contraction is extremely effective. Um, takes a little practice to learn how to do it. If you had a good high intensity training coach teach you, that's even better. Um, but basically it's just, you know, in the, the home workout, it explains how to do it. It explains a couple different approaches to time static contraction. Um, so, you know, I give you a couple of, a couple of options, but time static contraction is by far the safest way you can train a muscle. And, uh, yeah, as long as you're contracting really hard to the point where you can't produce any more tension, of course it's as, as effective, especially the leg ones. Oh, well. <clears throat> training each isolated muscle to failure versus training some muscles groups. Okay, you can't isolate a muscle unless you surgically remove it from the body. You will always be training muscle in groups. Always. You cannot contract just one muscle. Other muscles will be contracting. Um, I think you mean simple movements versus compound movements. Research shows... No difference, except compound move, movements will have a better effect on cardiovascular improvement. How do you know if you have fast twitch or slow twitch fibers? Well, without taking a muscle biopsy of literally every muscle belly in your body, you don't know for certain because this will vary between muscle groups. But the easiest way I have found, and Ryan Hall, I believe, um, found this. I think I got this from him. Um, I just kind of look at somebody's recreation or sport history. So if somebody, you know, and I would ask clients this, if they came in and I'd say, you know, what kind of sports did you do sports in high school or middle school? And you know, what, what were they? If they say something like, yeah, you know, I was a, a cross country runner or something like that, then they likely have mostly slow twitch fibers because, they have the genetic ability to do well in endurance activities. So if someone gravitates towards endurance activities, they likely have mostly slow twitch fibers, almost certainly. If somebody gravitates towards something like American football or, you know, even basketball, track, if they're a sprinter or a pole vaulter or a high jumper or a long jumper, they have fast twitch. So that's the easiest way to tell is look at, you know, what people gravitate towards in, in terms of recreation or sports. All right. Well, with this, the results would not be different. Uh, one would just take longer. What? I don't really understand this question. Is there any good way to focus on the eccentric phase of the reps when training alone? And is it even worth the effort? I don't even know what that means. Is there any way to focus on the eccentric phase? Yeah, just go slow. Is it worth the effort? I, I don't know what that means. All right. If I have the genetics to recover and adapt quickly, can I work out six days a week doing push-pull, batting leg to the pulling days? You do not have the genetics to recover that quickly. Trust me. You do not have the genetics. Nobody does. To train intensely with an adequate volume six days a week. So you, you are delusional if you think you can. Again, 
you guys are trying to cram in as many exercises in a week as possible, thinking that that's going to get you faster results. It's not. There's been dozens of studies that show this to be true, that have shown that increase in frequency of workouts has no effect on the results. It might get you to your genetic limit 5% faster, but why would you risk being under-recovered and not getting any result at all by trying to push it faster? Stop trying to push it as fast as you can. You can Nobody can work out six days a week with high intensity and adequate volume and see results. Don't even think about it. Even a bodybuilder on steroids. The only reason a bodybuilder can work out six days a week is they're not training hard. Like the reason is like you have an average physique or a below average physique and you want your dream physique immediately. So what you're trying to do is trying to push the process along and take the process into your own hands. It's not up to you. You cannot push the process along as much as you th would like to be able to. Your body's going to do it on its own time. Do not work a muscle three times a week. Hell no. The systemic, the systemic fatigue and inflammation, there's no way you'll be able to recover from that. And if you think that you are recovering from that, well, then you're not stimulating anything. All right. Third week of hit exercises at the end of my exercise when I was doing biceps curls. The end of it I was completely out of breath and feeling like throwing up. What could be the reason? Well, the reason is you're deconditioned and out of shape and you were training hard. It's normal. It's normal to feel this in the beginning. All right. Muscle soreness. I covered that a million times. I'm not even going to go over it again. I'm sorry. Go back, go back to older video. I, I, I have plenty of videos on soreness. I'm not going over that again. How can you tell which twitch muscle fibers you have? Went over that already. 30, 50, 30, yeah. But didn't see results in a hair perch for you, maybe. Sure. All right. Tried time static contraction. Drew Bay recommends 30 seconds, 50%, 75%, 100%. Didn't see results in hypertrophy, maybe in strength. Well, how much time did you give yourself? <laughs> like, you're not going to see a huge amount of hypertrophy in even a month, not even two months, not even three months. Muscle hypertrophy is really slow for normal people. So when you say you didn't see results in hypertrophy, you didn't see the results you expected and you wanted. But then it's not up to you. It wasn't the program's fault. It was your genetics fault. And this is the thing I really don't like about the fitness industry is people will blame the program for not seeing results and never blame their, their genetics. It's your genetics. And hypertrophy takes a long time. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not even going to happen in a couple of months. You might see five pounds, pounds of muscle growth in three months. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Guys, with your questions, some of them just really make absolutely no sense. So try to be as coherent as possible because if I don't understand what you're asking, I'm just going to skip over it. I just answered a question like this. You do not want to work out six days a week under any circumstance. If you're, if you're training with enough intensity for an optimal response, you're not going to be able to tolerate or recover from six days a week. All right. 
you're going to have to, I can't, I can't give you an answer on this with such general information. I'm going to need to know your training history, your current diet, your height, your weight, your age. There's a million things we're going to need to know. If you want to address this, then email me for private coaching. You can email me at jvincentfitness at gmail.com. I'll post it in the comments if you want coaching. I, I can't, you know, I'm not, I, I can't answer you know, give you a, a simple answer to an extremely complicated question. I need to know a lot more information. And if you want me to help you with that, a private coaching call is the best approach. Oh, no, no, no. oh shit. Isaac Holloway. If I missed you, um, I've been a little bit behind on things. Um, I'll send that over this afternoon. If I miss you, I apologize. Just send me another email um, because I've got them. A lot of times I got them created, but sometimes things get in the way and I skip over. So if you never receive them, just email me and I'll send those over today. I might be biting off a little more than I can chew at the moment. Got to get a little better with time management here because I have been skipping over some people accidentally. If you know, if we did have a call and I forgot to send the diet and something in, in, in a workout over, just email me again <clears throat> because my time management has sucked lately. I'll admit it. Yeah. Saw a video of Dr. McGuff saying that new data shows once you start slowing down during a site, you likely created the stimulus for muscle growth. Do you agree? Um, yeah, because well, there's a there's a threshold. There's there's a particular amount of fatigue your muscle needs to experience for the stimulation, and this amount of fatigue varies between individuals. So the reason we go to failure is because we don't know exactly how much fatigue you need to stimulate growth. Um, could be when you start to slow down for some people, and some people may need more than that, and we don't know. So that's why we push it all the way to the end. No, failure is not the inability to move the weight because you could recruit other muscle groups or use momentum to move the weight. Failure is the inability to continue the concentric phase of the range of motion in the prescribed form. That's what failure is. What are my opinions on diet, drinks, and artificial sweeteners? I don't care for them. That's it. That's my honest opinion. Is training for over one hour in a session detrimental? If you're training with adequate intensity, you shouldn't be able to tolerate one hour unless you're taking huge breaks in between exercises. So, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. New research by Christopher Barricott shows training biceps on different angle are superior for hypertrophy. Well, I didn't see the research, so I can't tell you, but I can tell you right now that if you have average genetics, you wouldn't notice a difference. Might be, you know, you got to remember, they, they sometimes perform these studies on bodybuilders. Um, if you are not a bodybuilder or a physique competitor, or a you know fitness model, you're not going to experience the type of muscular development that would even require to train anything at a different angle. Um, I'll look up his research, but I highly doubt it. Again, superior for by hypertrophy. How much hypertrophy? How much? Uh, yeah. How much uh, improvement compared to not training them from different angles? If it's a 1% to 3% improvement, then it's pointless. Any truth to HGH being spiked after fasting for over two days? I have no idea. Is doing underhand pull-downs enough for biceps? I know bench and M-press is enough for triceps. Probably. 
You got to remember the function of the biceps is wrist supination, shoulder flexion, and elbow flexion. When you're doing an underhand pull down, you're working all those functions. I would doubt that in, in James Fisher and James Steele, I believe did a research um, showing that an additional biceps movement or an additional triceps movement with the compound movements like a row and a press showed no additional benefit in muscle growth. So I would imagine that doing a pull down to failure is all you need for, you know, 90 to 95% of your biceps development and adding an additional curl probably isn't going to help much. <sighs> Should we do abs and full body workout? Yes, definitely. You know, it's still, yeah, do abs at the end of your full body workout. Now, I just want to quickly look up this research. Christopher Paraket. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. All right, I'm just going to briefly look over this. The effects of varying glenohumeral joint angle on acute volume load, muscle activation, swelling, and echo intensity, biceps breaking, resistance training. All right, let's see. There's manipulating joint angles during isolation exercises may impact. Here, I'll show the. I'm going to share this tab. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. We investigated the acute effects of varying glenohumeral joint angle on the biceps brachii with a crossover repeat a measure design with three different biceps curls. One session served as a positive control. Subjects performed nine sets of biceps curls with their shoulder in neutral position. Experimental condition, vary the glenohumeral joint by performing three sets in shoulder extension. Volume load and muscle activation were recorded during the training sessions. Muscle swelling and strain were assessed via muscle thickness and eco intensity responses at pre, post, and post. There were no significant difference between conditions for most dependent variables. However, the overall session EMG amplitude was significantly higher. Our findings suggest that varying joint angles during resistance training may enhance total muscle activity. All right, guys, you got to remember, like, <laughs> there are so many things in the study that were not controlled. Rep speed, rep cadence, intensity of effort. Uh, like, you know, the, here's the thing. When you're doing nine, nine sets of curls, not to failure, and putting and changing the angle – to, you know, shoulder flexion. So what it showed was that doing a curl in shoulder flexion um, provided more hypertrophy than neutral. But per performing, and this is simply because the function of the biceps is wrist supination, elbow flexion, and shoulder, shoulder flexion, okay? So you're, you're creating what's called active insufficiency. But if you were training the muscle to failure in the neutral position versus to failure at this joint angle, I can almost guarantee the results would be exactly the same. The problem was the exercise stimulus was just overall not very intense. Flexing the shoulder mildly increased the intensity of contraction, but none of the sets were to failure. So this allowed you to overload and contract and fatigue the muscles deeper than this. But if you simply took the neutral position to failure, you would have gotten all the stimulus. 
So that's why you guys need to, when you read these studies, you really got to be careful about the process which they measure because this study is irrelevant bullshit because we don't know the intensity of effort. We did, they didn't control, they didn't control rep cadence, rep speed. They didn't control set duration. They didn't control volume. They said nine sets. Okay. Well, if somebody does each repetition for one second, somebody does each repetition for three seconds, the volume is completely different. They didn't say whether or not they took it to failure. They didn't say they took it to failure. So they probably didn't. So yeah, completely friggin' irrelevant that study. What a disappointment. Yeah, when you do a bunch of shitty sets, manipulating the angle which which allows the muscle to contract a little harder is going to show benefit because the muscle's contracting harder. But if you're training to failure, regardless of what angle you're training at, you're contracting the muscle as hard as you can. So if you train to failure up here, it's not contracting the muscle any harder or creating any more muscle fiber than training it down here. But if you're doing a bunch of sets not to failure here, might be a little more effective than down here. That's what they showed. What a dumb study. Is a reverse curl enough for forearm work? No, you want to do wrist flexion and wrist extension with a dumbbell. Reverse curl will work the brachialis and brachioradialis a little more than a supinated but if you're doing a row and a pull down, you're working the brachialis, brachioradialis as much as you can anyway. Do you like lunges as an exercise? They're okay. Um, eh, I don't. I, I don't do them. Um, I worked out with um, John Sanma's Bulldog Mindset. If you guys haven't subscribed to his channel yet, definitely do that. He's an awesome, dude. Um, I did them with him one day, and they were tough, but I just don't really like them. They're fine. They're a little less efficient. Tough to go to failure on it, but, you know, they're okay. Oops. All right. Uh, what's your take on Schoenfeld's research saying to do 10 sets by the part each week when training hard? There's no way he could do it. Yeah, because Schoenfeld, he never, um, he never controls for rep cadence or intensity of effort. So he, he, the, pro the problem is he's not controlling for rep cadence. So if one individual does 10 sets at one second each direction, Versus another individual that does three seconds each direction at 10 sets. The second individual did three times as much volume. So when you're defining volume by sets and not controlling rep cadence, it's fucking irrelevant. His research is completely fucking pointless. Because he's doing 10 sets. He's defining volume wrong by sets. But volume is time under load. So if you're not controlling for rep cadence, then there's completely different times under load between individuals. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do 10 sets this way because you're doing way more volume than his subjects, which he's not controlling for time under load. I hate that study. His research is so fucking stupid. And it all comes down to his inability to properly define things. They don't. Purchase Doug McGuff book, Body by Science, What to Look For in the Book. I don't know. Just read the book, dude. <laughs> I work 12 hours a day, have little to no time to work out early in the day. Does it affect my muscle building if I train exhausted? Yeah, it will. Um, try to train on your day off and just train once a week. What is wrong with you? The dog's annoying me. Probably has to pee. Why are you breathing like that? Is a vertical pulling exercise even possible with dumbbells? No. Unless you hang upside down. <laughs> dumbbell row works lats, but not sure. Yeah, the dumbbell row. That's why you want to do like, you want to do a chin up or a time static 
contraction chin up or negative chin ups um, plus plus a row. But even if you only did a row, it's, it's not going to make a huge difference if you don't do a vertical pull. What type of equipment is needed for the home workout program? I recommend a set of adjustable dumbbells. You can get them on Amazon now for $99. Um, and uh, just those furniture moving straps for time static contraction. I have links to the recommended equipment in the workout, but a huge amount of the workout is also body weight. And the thing about like, if you got these furniture moving straps or a set of adjustable dumbbells, you never need to get them again. You have them for life. So it's not a bad investment. Uh, train to failure, but question whether I dig deep enough of a hole, so to speak. Any advice on this? Well, do you do you feel do you feel like you really work the muscle? If so, then you're fine. If you feel like you could do another few sets, then you didn't then you didn't train it deep enough. Um, but again, you could be you could just have a lot of slow twitch muscle fiber, and that's why you don't feel you dig a d very deep hole. In which case, um, you're not going to see huge results from training anyway. What is wrong with this dog? Okay, wait a second. Sixty seconds in between sets is fatigue set in. All right, well, this person just posted more information on the study, so I'm going to have to read the study deeper. Let's see, they don't. All right, well, I'm going to have to read a little deeper. Let's see. When eating a calorie deficit, how should training be changed? Left often, no change. At all. No, it shouldn't be changed at all. The only thing you'd want to maybe adjust is volume and frequency because you're not going to have, you're going to have less energy. All right, I'm going to be on here for two more minutes, guys. Two more minutes. Um, and then I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to bring up my at-home workout again. All right. So if you guys haven't already, check out the at-home workout. Just found your content. You do videos and common injuries and how to deal with them. I, I've talked about them in live streams. I haven't really done any videos on them, but common injuries are... You know, lower back pain, knee pain, um, rotator cuff. Um, a lot of these have to do with muscle atrophy and weakness. Ace, quiet. This fucking dog. Um, so if you, you get stronger overall, it, it, through my experience, you know, I've had tons of people with lower back pain, knee pain, and rotator cuff pain. And unless there's, you know, degeneration of the tissue in those joints, um, Almost all, even if there is degeneration of the tissue, um, proper training gets rid of a lot of the pain. Are reverse bent over flies pointless for upper back? Yes. If you're doing a row, if you're doing any kind of pulling movement, you, you don't need to do those. Lower back pain, any stretches or techniques to avoid prevent it? Yeah, you, to avoid and prevent it, Stretches aren't going to help with that. You just need to make your lumbar extensor strong. Um, doing like a stiff-legged deadlift or Romania deadlift or a lumbar extension exercise will help with that. 
right, we're going to go one more question here because I'm running out of time. You said you eat mostly potatoes, eggs, and chicken. How do you get all your vitamins and nutrients? Well, I also eat vegetables too. I throw them in there. Um, I eat a lot of sweet potatoes. Yeah, eggs and chicken, really, a lot of that. Um, so all the micronutrients, they come through, they come through vegetables. So if you're eating, if you're eating vegetables with every meal, you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot of that. <sighs> all right, so we went for about an hour. So um I'm gonna hop off here. Um, if you guys haven't already, check out the hit home workout. There's a link right there. And um yeah. Follow me on Instagram, underscore J underscore Vincent, and I'll do another live stream maybe in a few days. Um, also, the Patreon link is down at the bottom there, patreon.com forward slash J Vincent. All right, see you guys next time.